want to learn how to turn this into this? Don't go away. Hi there, I'm Anya from Peony and Time. You guys, today's video is so, so fun. We're gonna go over every step to make one of these gorgeous giant yarn blankets. How beautiful is this? You guys, this blanket has just like fueled my dreams. <laughs> It's so, it's so gorgeous, it's so soft. So you might have seen, I previously made a video on how to do um, what I call the Peony and Time Blanket. It's a lovely giant yarn blanket made in a basic rib stitch, which is super fun and I love it and it's gorgeous, but I've been really dying to make just one of those really basic giant yarn blankets that you see all over Pinterest and Instagram um, so that I could have one. <laughs> and seriously, you guys, this is such a fun, like, instant gratification project. This whole thing, I think I knitted up in about, maybe about two hours total. It's so fast, it's so fun, and I mean seriously, how gorgeous is this? This is made out of eight pounds of giant yarn, um, big stitch merino top. I got this from Sarah at Mama's Knows, uh, Sarah at Mama Knows Luxury, um, and so yeah. It's just like a really gorgeous basic pattern. Um, yeah, and we'll just go over step by step how to make it super easy, super fast from cast on to then binding off and then a really fast, easy weaving in the ends and felting everything. Seriously, this is such a fast project, so simple, so fun, and I, I'm obsessed. I love it so much. So anyhow, thanks so much for joining and let's get started. All right, so I am so excited to start knitting this blanket up. All right, and as always to get started, first step, remove any rings that you have because any sharp edges will snag at this and just leave you so disappointed. <laughs> so take those off real fast. Um, so supplies for this blanket. I'm using eight pounds of Big Stitch Merino from Sarah over at Mama Knows Luxury. Um, this is in the color pewter. It's, ugh, it's, it is so gorgeous. It's like kind of between like an almond and a gray. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of an interesting mix of like cool and warm tones and I don't, I'm obsessed with it. So yeah, so since this is eight pounds, it's gonna make like a nice, like slightly larger throw. Um, okay, so I am going to cast on 18 stitches using the long tail cast on method. The long tail method does use a little bit more yarn, but it's really important to me that the cast on be, isn't too tight and will allow just a little bit of drape and stretch to the blanket as it gets, as it's made. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out about like 13-ish feet. Okay, that's right about, measured right about 13 feet there. Oh, this is so nice and soft. All right, so I'm just gonna make a slip knot. I'm sure you know how to do that. Just twist to make a loop, reach through that loop, grab the yarn, and pull through. So you can see that's slipping back and forth there. All right, and then, oh, this yarn, seriously, you guys, is just so much fun to work with. Like, it's so lovely and soft. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to cast it right onto my arm. So um, if you're not familiar with the cast on method, I'll link a video um, that goes over in detail um, how to do the cast on method on like regular size knitting needles. Um, this obviously is, is a, this obviously is a little bit different since it's giant and you're using your arms. Um, but if you need help just kind of understanding the concept, go back, watch that. Maybe that'll be helpful. Um, otherwise, um, basically what you're doing is just um, making kind of making more slip knots so you have the tail towards you and then this is the live yarn going to your giant um ball of fiber here and so with you're going to take the um the tail towards you twist that reach through it grab that live yarn pull that through that loop and then put that loop right on your hand there and then just kind of tug that down until it seems like a good um a good um uh, until it's a kind of a good size that fits easily on your arm, um, isn't too tight, but also isn't too sloppy. So yeah, that's kind of always a trick with casting on is you want it not too tight, but not too loose either, just so that ha it has a little bit of stretch to it, but also looks nice and tidy. So we're going to go ahead and cast on 18 stitches total. And that 18 stitches includes that um, first slip knot stitch that we that we made. I have 
18 stitches on there. So we ended up with just a little more of a tail than I really would have preferred, um, but that that's gonna be okay. All right, so if you want to, you can take it out um, and then like uh, measure it out first so you'll get like a really, just like a really, really nice short tail, but um, today we're gonna call that good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and carefully lay these down, pop them off my wrist. Like, so yeah, you can see with the long tail cast on, like I pop those off and then I can stretch, um, stretch those stitches right out. So that is great. Okay, so for just knitting by hand here, um, you're gonna take the live yarn, this tail, do not knit with this. It's just gonna hang out down here and mind its own business. Um, all right, so you're gonna take the live yarn and then make sure your stitch is laying flat. You don't want any twisted stitches. I mean, unless you like that look. Um, I personally don't care for it. I like um, the stitches to be laying nice and flat. So make sure it's untwisted, flat looking kind of like that classic heart shape. And then you're just gonna reach through, grab this yarn, pull that right through, and then make sure, and then you can lay that so it's also nice and flat. Move on to your next stitch, reach through, pull that through so it's laying nice and flat. Um, another interesting thing, when we're working from the front like this, um, knitting a blanket with our hands, um, it's a little bit different from when you're doing like a regular knitting project. With a regular knitting project, you would like um, knit across and then you would turn it over and work the back and work from the back side. With this, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna be laying this right on the floor. Um, I mean, and you're certainly welcome to like flip it around if you'd like. I find it's easier just to keep things, um, to keep things tidy and then also to make sure no stitches fall out. I find it e simpler and easier to just go ahead and just work from the front. So we're just going to be working back and forth just across the front of this project. Okay, so we just did our second stitch. We'll grab our third one here. Make sure that's laying, fr that's laying flat, which means this like side that's on the front facing you is going to be on the right. Reach through, grab that stitch. Awesome. Take that, reach through, grab that stitch. And then you can just kind of be aware that you're wanting to keep these about the same size. And then just continue working like that all the way across the row. Right, so there's your first row already looking lovely. And so now, like I said, we're just going to start from this side and work back across. So, so working from the front, reach through. Um, and then also the size of these stitches is totally dependent on your preference. You can make them as loose or as tight as you would like. And if you start knitting them and you, um, and then after a couple rows, you're like, you know what? That's a little looser than I want. Looks um, looking a little bit sloppy. Or if you're like, oh, it's too small and tight. I don't like it. <laughs> then just rip it right out and redo it. Look how gorgeous that is looking. So we're just gonna continue working this back and forth pattern until we run out of yarn.
All right, so after just an easy couple hours of work, I have this whole blanket done. I ended up with a tail about that long. Um, I was hoping I could get it a little bit to be <laughs> a little less yarn waste because I'm a total perfectionist, um, but it's definitely not enough to go back across. Um, so this time, what I've done before with my blankets is just the basic, your like standard bind off. Um, and this time I want to try a new technique that I learned from a lovely maker named Kristen Volra. Kristen, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. If not, I apologize. <laughs> um, and she uses um, a crochet cast off, which is super simple. Um, so if you're not a crocheter, don't let that <laughs> don't let that word scare you. Um, and so I wanted to try it this time instead of doing the regular bind off because it lets you just knit till you run out of yarn and then just bind off immediately instead of having to like calculate out how much yarn you're going to need for a bind off because your like generic bind off does take a lot more yarn. Okay. So, um, for this last row though, for the crochet bind off, I did, as you can see here, I made the stitches like significantly larger than the other ones, just because I'm always <laughs> paranoid about, um, getting a cast off that's going to like not allow a nice drape for the end of your like huge, lovely drapey blanket. So I made this a little extra large and all you do, it's nice and simple. You're just going to take this, um, last loop. And so please notice, um, I'm starting on the edge opposite. I'm, I'm starting on this edge, like the opposite edge from where you, um, from where you ended your knitting with, um, the live yarn over there. So go to the opposite edge, grab this live loop, grab the one next to it. And then you're just going to, okay, you can kind of like turn this there, just like place your hand through it. And you're going to slip this stitch over that second loop. And then you're just going to take this one, take this stitch, kind of turn. And so I'm going to take this one, slip it over the next one, take this one, turn, and you're just going to continue like slipping these stitches over the stitch to the left. I hope you can see that well, and that makes sense. So you're just taking this, um, hand through, grab that stitch, pull that through. Okay. All right. And then you're just going to continue that all the way across. And so you can see, it makes, it makes a nice simple bind off. And since I made these stitches a little larger, I'm really happy with the way that this is like laying really evenly. Um, and it isn't like pulling it in at all. And I feel like there'll be like still like a natural amount of drape, um, that will be able to like mimic the amount of drape in the rest of the blanket basically. So we'll just continue across here. Plus, how easy is this guys? <laughs> this is such a simple technique. I love it. Right. So last stitch, and then you're just going to tuck your live yarn, pull it right through there. Then you can kind of cinch that down a little bit. That will be your ending knot. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Again, this is the color pewter. This is the first time I've worked in this color. And oh my gosh, you guys, I just seriously, I'm so obsessed with it. All right. So the great news is, oh my gosh, we just finished this gorgeous, huge blanket. And what a fast project too, right? Isn't that awesome? Okay, so um, the only steps that we have left are just obviously dealing with these um, two ends. And the lovely thing with giant blankets is um, that with this natural fiber, we are just gonna weave this in around a couple times. It's a super, it's a super easy process. We're just gonna weave this in a couple times and grab our little felting kit. All right, so this is what the felting kit looks like. I have mine, um, I got mine through um, Mama Knows Luxury. Um, and if you're not familiar with how to felt this, um, I'm not gonna go into it in depth here, um, but I do have a video specifically just talking about I'm just going over in detail, how, just weaving in and felting the ends. Basically, all we're doing is we're weaving this back, this end back and forth a couple of times. Uh, you put your little um, styrofoam board underneath it. You grab your little leather thumb and forefinger protectors, your little wooden um, stabby needle thing. <laughs> and um, for this, you load the needle in. And be careful, these 
are seriously sharp and also barbed needles because um, the barbs help to um, rough help to tangle the fibers up faster, which is a, which is what we're doing. Just trying to get those fibers all tangled up together so that they'll stay together. Um, so yeah, all that's going to happen is again just weave this back and forth a couple times. I like to do it kind of um, at the base here since there's already a little more bulk. Anyway, you can go up the side if you want, but I kind of like, since this is already a teeny bit firmer than this soft stuff on the side, I like to just kind of keep it down here. So I'm gonna weave it back and forth a couple of times. And then also important to note, um, this um, is a really dense piece of styrofoam, but the needle will go through it. So put this on the floor, um, or some other surface that won't like either if it's a hard if it's a table or something you're gonna probably end up breaking the tip of your needle um, um, Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and weave this back and forth and Felt that puppy in also. I'm not gonna weave in this entire end. I'm just going to Weave in this back and forth a couple times and then trim the end because we do not need to, we do not need this entire thing Kind of like that I feel like that looks fine so okay so I'm just gonna trim this off right here you kind of see this here I'm just gonna trim this off right here and then I am just going to felt a bunch of times just a lot of like gentle like or a lot of like stabs through here and all you're doing basically is interlocking and tangling up these fibers together so they'll stick together and of course when you're trimming this please do be careful not to cut the rest of your project here because that would be a bummer. All right, so I got my finger guards on my left hand since I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna be doing the needle poking with my, with my right hand here. So just get that in place. And here too, you're just felting just enough to, like I said, get these like real securely all tangled together. Um, but the longer, the longer you felt, um, the firmer this area is going to get as these fibers kind of interlock together. It makes it kind of like dense and, and kind of hard. So, um, you don't want it to get just, <laughs> um, you don't want to turn it into a brick here. So just kind of felt until you feel like it's nice and safe. I'm going to go back and forth just kind of around this whole area to give kind of like, so it'll be kind of secure all the way across here. Well, sometimes if I kind of want to focus on getting um, like the very end of it, which I know is like right here, the very end of it to stick really well, um, I can you can kind of pinch it a little bit, hold it together. You can just kind of check on it. It's like already pretty, it's starting to feel a little firmer. Yeah, it's, it's kind of wanting to stay in place there. So that is fantastic. If this is just a blanket that you're making yourself, you can also like have the luxury of just um, working it a little bit. You can also like turn it over and work from the other side here too. Um, yeah, like work it in a little bit until you think like, like it's the, the smallest possible, smallest possible amount that you think might, might work to get those fibers to stay in place. And then, you know, if later you're like, oh, I'm starting to, it seems like it's not quite as secure as it needs to be, then you can always go back and felt it more. If it's something for, like, if you're making this for a customer, uh, then you might want to make sure it's like extra secure since you don't want them returning it to you and saying that the end was popping out. So, you know, follow your heart, use your best judgment. And you'll see too, kind of like rub, to make some of those little holes disappear, but it will look just like a little more worked than, um, than the rest of your project. So, you know, just take that into account too when, when you're with how much you're working it. But, you know, this is like a, such a small percentage of the blanket. So don't, you know, don't worry about it too much. I think that feels pretty good. And then turn this around and do the exact same process with this side.
right, and then you're done. so much for watching. I hope that was helpful and clear. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment below. If you make your own, um, please find me on Instagram and tag me in your photos because I would love to see. So yeah. All right. Thanks so much for joining. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.